first-hand knowledge about the situation. Abdul Razak's brother, two brothers, Salim al aradi currently detained in the UAE, was arrested in August 2014. One of ten Libyans arrested, four of which were later released. No information has been provided about his arrest to his family for a prolonged period of time, indeed to this day. And now we are uh, honored really to have Abdul Razak amongst us as the family starts to speak out. They just come from Canada, and I think Abdul Razak might mention a little bit about that. He'll tell us about his brother and his family and the, you know, the effect that that has in a very personal way on what the special rapporteur has been talking about, what Khadija will talk about, what I will talk about. It frames why we're here. And for that reason, it's an enormous pleasure that uh, we look forward to hearing what uh, the has to say. Thanks. Mr. Chairman, respected speakers, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. I would like to thank Ms. Safwa Aisha and the International Center for Justice and the Human Rights Organization for organizing this event and inviting me. My name is Abdel Zagil Aradi. I am here to share humanitarian ordeal by many Libyan families, including mine, have had to go through for the last nine months. For over 23 years, members of our family have lived in the United Arab Emirates. Two of my brothers, Salim and Mohammed, already relocated to the UAE to start an international company in home of license. This company is still in operation today in Dubai. This picture shows Mohammed and Salim. They are uh, rewarding one of the Chinese uh, entrepreneurs. The UAE has been a country that both Salim and Mohammed valued, and they worked very hard to contribute to its growth. My brother Salim is a Libyan born Canadian citizen. He has a beautiful family, four daughters, Marwa. Noor, Raihana, and Yasmin. He has one son, Mohammed. His children have not seen him for nearly 300 days. Marwa, who is 17 and in high school in Windsor, Canada, Ontario, Canada, has championed her father's case and is fighting for his freedom. Noor and Muhammad cannot comprehend what they have been told about their father. They suffer in sadness each day. Raihana and Yasmin believe their father is on an extended business trip. On August 18, 2014, both Muhammad and Salim were approached separately by a UAE state agent, security agency. They were questioned, their properties were shared, searched without a warrant, and they were arrested on the spot. No accusation or charge were provided to their family at the that time of arrest. Salim was on an annual vacation in Dubai with his elder mother, wife, and children when he was arrested. This is one of the pictures that they have taken during the vacation. The United Arab Emirates denied having detained my brothers. Our family did not know their whereabouts or if they were alive until we received a call after two months and nine days. Salim called his wife and informed her that he was alive. And he asked about his mother and his children, and the call was ended. Within a similar period, Eight other Libyan businessmen were detained in a, in, in a systematic, a 
approach. Soon after, Amnesty International issued an urgent action, and in Human Rights Watch issued a report on the detainees. All of the families received no response as to why their loved ones were detained. All of the 10 businessmen were residents of the UK for, the, for decades. Extremely respected in their profession field, law-abiding residents, and had no known political involvement, involvement or affiliation in the UAE or Libya. Amnesty International and Human Rights Watch reported the detainees as considered enforced surveillance and arbitrary under international law. Our family remained without communication with both Salim and Mohammed until December 2014. Randomly, Mohammed and three other detainees were released, placed on an airport and deported out of the UAE. My brother Mohammed, a man who was invested extensively in the United Arab Emirates, lives with four unanswered questions. For what reason he was detained? Why he was arrested? Why he was treated this manner? Why he was deported out of the country? And why his brother Salim is still detained? During this initial period, the during the, this initial period, the detainees were held in undisclosed location. In January 2014, Salim was relocated to al Wahba prison in Abu Dhabi. Since then, his wife, Alia, was allowed to visit him once, and he's, he was received only two, he received, uh, he was received only two calls. During the visit, an officer stood near them within earshot and was listening to their conversation. It is also very clear that the two phone calls were monitored. I am very concerned about my brother Salim's health. Salim suffers from a serious health conditions, some breathe system and others due to prison conditions. He has high blood pressure, asthma, and high cholesterol, and vulnerability due to an open heart surgery which he had before the time, before he was detained. Salim has had a major weight loss, eye infection, and bronchitis. Our most serious concern is that he was developed worse conditions in his back related to the discs in his spine from sleeping on concrete floor for months and we know that he is in continuous extreme pain. Salim has been denied access to medical aid for the majority of his time in detention, with the exception of a single examination from a specialist after nine months of detention. Salim's most basic human rights have been violated. He was held in communicable detention for four months has not been provided with legal representation, let alone legal representation of his own. He has not been provided adequate access to his family. I am not a lawyer, but I cannot comprehend that one visit with guards in the room and three monitored phone calls in nine months can be considered adequate access. He has been denied adequate medical care. After months of requesting a specialist for his back, he was given one examination last month in which he can only be examined for one issue. Salim remained in solitary confinement for, for the first 114 days of his detention. And our family is all also very concerned about his safety and that he has been subjected to ill treatment. I don't know why Salim was arrested. Many, many people have said his detainment is politically motivated. But what I do know for sure is that after 290 days, he has still not been provided with the reason for his arrest or been given the, the opportunity to challenge his ongoing detention. <coughs> Salim's detainment is renewed every 30 days 
without due process. At no time you know, these viewers has even any evidence being presented or have any allegation being formally made. Although I know the United Arab Emirates Constitution and law does not allow for such a statement of people, it appears that they were not applied to Shadir nor Muhammad. The Canadian mission has been helping our family from the start with, with counselor assistance. The Libyan mission recently visited Salim and the other detainees for the first time. Our family appreciates any effort made to him on behalf of Salim, but his medical <coughs> condition is worsening. His health is in jeopardy, and he is still not home with his family. Thank you. This court needs, needs to be involved with the Our family is hoping Canada and Libya will continue to work through the diplomatic channels to bring this situation to an end. I have come to Geneva on behalf of Salim and his family to meet with the special procedure branch of the Office of the High Commissioner for uh, Human Rights. Finally, because of high school examinations, Salim's daughter Marwa could not be here with us, but she asked me to share her words with you. I quote, my name is Marwa al -Arad. I am 17 years old. My last memory of my father was sitting our hot chocolate at the cafe in Atlantis. Resort in Dubai. It was my birthday, and he, was, he told me that he was proud of me. This was the last day I saw my father. I have many questions for the people who, made, who took my father. I spent seven months hoping they would let him go, but now I have decided to fight for my father's freedom. I fear for his death, for my my dad's life, and he needs to come home. I hope the United Nations will help me reunite my family again. I leave you with these words. Thank you. I also have a video of Marwa, and I could ask for permission to listen to it. You told me that uh, yesterday they came at midnight, and then they called from the reception, and they asked your father to come down for a few mm -hmm. minutes, and then they took him. We grew up in Vancouver, and then my father decided to go to Dubai so that he can um, run his business there. The last time we went to, with my father, we were on vacation, and it, it was in Dubai. And I remember like at that time he used to swim with us all the time and have fun. And um, at midnight, at that day, somebody called from the reception. And uh, it was a man from the security service. He asked my father to come down for a few minutes so that he can ask him some questions. My mom didn't feel okay about it. She felt that there is something wrong. She t she insisted to go down with my father. And like they talked with my father for a few minutes and then they took him. They never told us the reason why. They just took him and that's it. It's hard. Special like I'm 17. <laughs> yeah, it's hard. Sometimes I don't know what to do. Sometimes I cry, sometimes I don't know. He was a good man. He had a lot of friends. Everybody respected him. I, I don't remember, like, he was never involved in politics. It's unfair to, like, for him to be in such situation. Especially, like, he did nothing wrong. It's sometimes, like, hard to deal with trying to fight for my father and trying to work hard for my grades in school. So it's sometimes difficult to manage both. I started a Facebook page and a Twitter account, uh, as well as a blog. 
and there is over 2,500 uh, 2, uh, Canadian people who uh, signed the petition of that blog, like the support of the Canadians, their comments. It's been like overwhelming, like seeing people commenting such nice positive comments. I want to sh like show the best and do the, the best I can so that hopefully it comes to, into, into a conclusion where my father is released and that's it. <laughs>